Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Grace was Mr. Friday live stream. It's uh, Con here. Um, running a bit late. Uh, finished with a couple of things in the shop uh, about 10 minutes ago and just had to set up the whole lighting and everything. We don't have the studio ready. We can just you know, uh, click the switch and everything is up and running. But uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, is this audio okay? Um, I know that, you know, the camera is a bit wonky, but I could spend another five minutes setting it up. But uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that's all going to be fine. How is everyone doing? Um, it's uh, It's been a week. Well, yeah, it, it is. It has been a week. That's right. And uh, me and Becky recorded the podcast on Tuesday last week, right? So, no, this week. And um, of course, when we got it out on Wednesday evening, the following morning, we got this announcement that Nikon bought red or got caught red-handed. I want to hear all your puns. I mean, obviously, red is now yellow. That's a big one. It's on Nikon Rumors. Uh, there's so many I want to hear from you. So definitely tell me your thoughts on this. First of all, if you do video, I want to hear your thoughts as well. If you don't do video, I kind of know what you're going to say, but I want to see your opinion because I think, I think personally, it's incredible. Uh, first of all, um, very unexpected. Uh, about two years ago, Red started this lawsuit about Z9 raw functionality and sued Nikon, and they settled last year. Uh, and I think... The results of that settlement that we can kind of cle clearly see right now, because uh, before they didn't settle, right? like like before, I think Sony and Apple settled with Red, and you know that was it basically. But I wonder if that thing about acquisition of Red happened during that lawsuit, you know, or when they settled, that was a result of it. They already knew that uh, Nikon is going to buy Red at this point. So it's all very interesting. Coffee fund is open. I'm actually, I'm going to pour myself a coffee because I haven't had a coffee yet here. So I got one early in the morning. Um, it's my normal routine, but I normally come to Grace and I have another cup, but it's been a little bit busy. So I'm going to have my coffee here with you. Um, and I hope, yeah, if it's early in the morning somewhere in California, well, thanks for staying up. If it's very late somewhere in Australia, well, thanks for staying very late. But if you're in UK or Europe, uh, it's a normal lunchtime for us, isn't it? So good morning, Jean. Thank you very much. Good morning, Adrian. Uh, well, good afternoon. Uh, hope all is well. Let's quickly check your comments. Uh, Len is asking, I wonder what the upside uh, will be for photographers, so for still photographers. Good question, Len. Um, that's obviously Red is a cinema, ca uh, cinema company, and they are very expensive cameras, obviously, for cinematography. They are produced by Netflix. Obviously, if you go on Red website, there's a whole page of shot on Red, um, you know, uh, movies and feature films. So, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot there to, to look uh, for in desire. And obviously, those are very expensive pieces of equipment. Now, my thinking is that... Obviously, Nikon's already said that they're going to start... They're going to let uh, Red be Red and run it as its own company. So uh, very similar what they do with Mark Roberts Motion Control Company that also Nikon bought a few years ago. And it's the one that has built robotic hands that you could put a camera on and you can get create the same movements uh, all around them for very special creative effects. But also we've seen last year that uh, those hands have been operated um, on sports events like baseball in the United States. So, you know, all sorts of things like this they do. So it's all video stuff. So we're going to talk about video stuff. Um, I think, to be honest with you, I don't think still photographers will benefit from the feature set perhaps. But we talked about in the past that... Uh, videography nowadays uh, pushes the stills technology. Uh, for example, 4K, 8K functionality, like especially 8K resolution, uh, gives us a higher resolution sensors. And performance in low light for video work, that's what pushes low light performances of the steel sensor. So I think that's where we will see the improvements. Obviously, if you saw Matt Irvin's video, who did a quite an interesting breakdown on this, he said that, well, um, Red has this um, full frame, you know, first in the world full frame um, global shots sensor with 17 stops of dynamic range, pushable to 20 in the post, you know. Uh, where, like, before Global Shutter, when we talked about this, Global Shutter would be would come from Sony. 
now we can potentially have this technology or access to this technology by Nikon themselves. You know, where this sensor was made, that's another question. So maybe if you know, do let me know in the comments below. But uh, uh, that's one of the interesting aspects of this. So we suddenly get this technology, but not from the usual suspects, aka Sony, you know, who build a sensor pretty much for everyone. So I think that's where we're going to start to see those things. You know, I don't think that uh, we're going to see the feature set helping video, uh, for still, photographers, still photographers that much, but obviously there's a lot more feature features to come for videographers. And also, I personally think that Nikon will launch its own video line. So if RED is going to stay this high-end cinematographer's line of cameras that is quite expensive, uh, I think it's still cheaper than IRI, uh, but it's uh, still going to be on expensive side for a lot of people. So unless you... Uh, you not normally you won't normally buy those cameras. I mean, they have cheap offerings, but the top offerings you you normally would rent them, so rental houses buy them, etc. So, uh, so in terms of this, yeah, uh, I think Nikon will start their own one, uh, own video line, videographer's line, as we would call it. We wouldn't call it prosumer because that things that the price is going to be low. I don't think the price is going to be low, but it's going to be competitive with offerings from Canon and Sony. Um, Panasonic as well. So, you know, so if you look, if you think about this, that's, I think, where we will start to see the major improvement there, but more on that a bit later. Uh, let's see. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have people from Canada, United States, Australia. Con, you awake? I am awake. Yes, I am. I am flying uh, to USA next week. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to do a live stream at 6 a.m., uh, from LA, uh, but uh, <laughs> when when I had an interview with the David, the drunk wedding photographer, he had to get up so early just to have an interview with me on a live stream. So uh, definitely a dedication. I don't think I will be able to do so unless I'm heavily jet lagged. So you never know. Uh, hello from Perth. Oh, Perth! Wow, wonderful. Um, uh, um, good friends of my wife they live in perth so um it's on our list to visit at some point so if we ever make it to australia definitely um that's one place we will be visiting uh we've got uk here audio is perfect fantastic i'm catching up so um audio video five out of five that's good because it's been buffering a little bit just uh, before the live stream. So uh, I had a bit of a th scare. If you haven't given us a like and subscribe, please do because that's, gr I mean, it, it, it's, you know, we appreciate this because obviously it opens the live stream to a lot of people who are looking or searching for this particular topic right now, you know, so, and also, you know, it helps us with a coffee. Uh, let's see what, what else we're saying here. Um, Joe Vlog says, I think RED is on trailing edge rather than leading edge of cinematic camera tech, but huge benefits to Nikon on, on a knowledge front. Um, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I, I also kind of thought of this, but I, you know, I don't know enough about RED, let's be honest. So, you know, um, it, like, to, you know, I've started obviously to read about this. I think we, we, if we have a podcast next week, we're going to research more on that and hopefully we'll give you a little bit more uh, kind of more rounded uh, look at this. But uh, if you think about it, yeah, who is uh, the main player right now on a high-end cinema? We've got Ari and we've got Red. And obviously there's Black Magic, but Black Magic, I think, is on the third place. I could be wrong, but we're talking about high-end feature film type of things, not not regular videographers, wedding videography, etc. You know, so um, that's what we look at. Uh, and in terms of this, I don't know. I mean, why would, you know, Red would be open for acquisition? It's an interesting question. Um, are they in good financial position? I don't know. That's the thing. It's something that maybe would be interesting to, to look at their papers, you know. Uh, but obviously, they've been running for quite some time. Uh, Red is well-known brand among cinematographers and people who work in that industry. So again, go on Red website right now. Go on uh, Shot on Red page. Uh, I might just um, link it in the comments below. And uh, that should give you a good idea that if you think they're behind, then their portfolio says otherwise. Uh, like, I mean, I watched Griselda very recently on Netflix, um, you know, um, so that was shot on red. Kila uh, with Michael Fassbender, um, you know, that was shot on red as well. Um, <laughs> Rebellion Moon, yeah, don't watch that. Um, so this quite a few things there really you know so um 
uh, that's that's been short recently. So in terms of, let's say, even if they're behind in terms of tech, it doesn't, you know, which I don't think they are. Uh, I don't, you know, they are being used widely and broadly um, for this type, uh, for this type of work, you know. So uh, yeah, let's let's go further. I'm just gonna I'm a little bit behind behind um, behind the comments, so I'm just gonna try to catch up a little bit. Uh, so John Hughes says Red has some glo uh, good global shots attack. Yep, we've covered that. Uh, 17 stops, which is really good. Uh, the judge settled without prejudices, so a lawsuit on that patent could happen again, not between Nikon and Red, obviously. Yeah, so that's true, but we had in the past as well, as, as I remember us discussing it on the podcast. Yes, yeah, Sony and Apple tried as well and had to settle at some point. Uh, Red turns yellow. Yes, we've, we've done this. Um, <laughs> I, I wrote quite a few things down and I've lost them anyway. So, uh, but video is on the menu, uh, boys and girls. So always rated Nikon as well. So, you know, I think they were a good company. We talked about Nikon getting into video space. Yeah, we, we talked about it. I mean, not just us. There's quite a lot of people um, from our behind the scenes talks over last three years. We were given an indication that something is going to happen, but... From our point of view, we thought that always oh, Nikon is going to re release a dedicated video camera, which I still think is going to be the case. Uh, but this is a massive move to acquire a company. If you think about it, uh, Nikon went from uh, nothing in video space, yeah, so to a major player. You know, that's that's big. That's big. You know, and think about yeah. I think we're going to see a dedicated Nikon video camera with that mount. And we're going to have red and hopefully there's enough technology for them, you know, price wise to trade. But if you think about video feature set, you know, obviously it's a box format of the camera. First of all, which means you can attach a lot of accessories to it. You know, that's uh, that's kind of a common way to go for a lot of cinematographers. Uh, if you can release something like this with that mount, that's going to be absolutely incredible. Um, there's a reason for them to have very expensive line of red cameras and then a cheaper line of Nikon Z cameras. So um, suddenly... Imagine Nikon releases a dedicated video system, not all in red, and you have the general pundits of, you know, oh, Sony cameras are better, FX3, oh, Canon has this whole video uh, line of things, you know, so those kind of generally been thrown in. Obviously, uh, kind of Sigma has a dedicated uh, video camera, I think it's FP, but obviously Blackmagic is probably, as value for money, is probably the best cameras uh, around in terms of just video quality and you know video cameras designed for this type of work. So those are the players. Nikon comes in. Obviously, Nikon has uh, quite extensive feature set on Z9 and Z8. Uh, you know, a lot of Nikon guys use those for videos. But then suddenly you release a video camera. If you would just release it this way, then you would have a normal people say, "Oh, Nikon is too late to the party. Ha ha ha! No one is going to buy them." Well, now Nikon is gonna have a red behind them. And then suddenly, whatever Nikon does in this space will have its weight, you know, and this is very important. This is very important. It's not very important for you and me, you know, the regular Joe doing stills photography, but it's very important for those big production companies, you know, so so that's, that's the reason for that, so. All right, so um, we have 175 viewers. Yeah, if you haven't given us a like yet, please do. Um, so Dave Walker says, I don't do video myself, but I can only be good for us all to think some were saying Nikon were on there <clears throat> only a few years ago. Well, it's all doom and gloom, isn't it, D uh, Dave? So, you know, apparently they didn't do financially, you know, so apparently uh, they were too late to the party. But surprisingly, um, you know, we are sitting here, you are there, you are Nikon users, and you enjoy that, um, you know, so always makes me love those comments under every single video we release or oh, I bought just a new camera, Sony or, you know, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Makes a, a, gives us a good chuckle because obviously if you, like, if all that it's important to write this comment, uh, that means that it's really kind of affects you more than us, you know, but we always laugh. I mean, we kind of, you know, I mean, we've been doing this for three, four years. So, you know, so that's what it is. Uh, I think I'm buffering again. Um, I'm back. Was I buffering? 
Good question. Good question. Uh, Ian White is asking, have you ever visited Valencia, Spain for photography? Uh, Valencia. Um, haven't been there, but I've done a lot of Spain. I've been to Spain about 10 times, uh, from Barcelona to Madrid, uh, to yeah, Marbella, um, Granada, um, all those places. But uh, we do love to go to Spain. Uh, we have quite a lot connecting us and my wife with Spain. So lots of friends, good friends that live in Spain. So yeah, we, all, we go there at least once a year. Um, that's for sure. Um, all right. Uh, Kinosis met... met, met Tanoia says, Nika needs to drop everything Z and start making DSLRs again. Good luck with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, okay. Uh, Nika definitely needed to gain lost ground in the video, and this was spectacular. Good leap forward, Diamond. That, that, I agree. I agree. So uh, that's that's what it is. Uh, Nika painted town red. Uh, let's get on this red rocket. That's another one. Uh, I want the puns coming, please, please, because this is brilliant. I really enjoy that. And obviously, you know, I mean, we can giggle here and obviously, like, this is super exciting. You know, this is super exciting, um, you know, for us, Nika, you know, Nika supposed to surprise us with the red purchase, you know. So um, I personally think it's been, it, it, it's been v like no one expected this. No one expected this, especially with the, you know, this whole settlement thing. That was, uh, that was very, very ancient. But also, as I mentioned, Mark Robbins before, um, so with the robotic arms, they use Z9s on those. They use cinema cameras on those. So imagine now you have robotic arms, uh, you know, you have, you, you're going to have dedicated video cameras going. So you, you can potentially start to supply those cameras to television. You know, that's that's another interesting opportunity. Nikon in Japan has some virtual reality studios for creators, and uh, I think it was set up with Microsoft. Again, if you listen to our Nikon reports from for the last five years, those little things we report on, which people don't really care about. But if you think, if you start to build up the bigger picture, um, suddenly all those little things start to make sense, isn't it? So you know, so I think this this. You know, purchase of red definitely um, opens up to a lot of lucrative opportunities. Um, let's see. So we're not buffering now. That's that's good. That's good news. So um, at least we have this. How is the um, uh, whatever four G five G in California? Is it doable? Can I do a live stream uh, well from my phone in California, or do you think it's not going to be that great? So obviously, you know, that's that's my thought. I might do that. I might not. All right, so let's see. I, if you're still a photographer, tell me what your thoughts are. I want, I want to hear what you think because obviously, I hope you're excited. Um, I know it may not affect you. I mean, we all photographers here, first of all. Uh, but I want to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, Vahagraphy is in chat. Hello, Vahan. He says this is huge, uh, huge news. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, David is in chat. David, looking forward to see you um, in a few, well, in a week. Um, let's see. So buffering in Essex, that's true. Uh, Jet Fall says, I've never needed a cinema camera, but Nikon made a strong move here. Now we know where they will get a global shutter from, and hopefully we will be able to dump Sony sensors for good. Don't think that's a Sony sensor dumping. I don't think that's happening. I think, um, you know, but it's good to have this technology. If someone knows um, where Red got this sensor from, uh, that would be a good thing to know. Um, who manufactured that sensor? That would be really cool. Uh, 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 let's see. Mike Norton asks if Nikon buys Red. Yes, yes, it does, apparently. That's, that's what happens. Uh, 4G and 5G are good California. Okay, okay. If I get up at 6 a.m. like you, David, I might, I might do a live stream. Who knows, you know? But I might be sleeping. You know, I like to sleep, though. Um, so Patrick Malloy says, waiting for Z9V for video. Yes, and uh, it's going to come out there together as, uh, with Z9H, you know? Uh, but a possibility of a boxy camera, you know, the box with all the you know mounts you can think of i think that's where it would be interesting to see those things uh ryan troy is in the chat and he's asking i've asked nikon for a cinema camera for the past three years although this isn't going to be a mirrorless nikon camera i'm sure they will implement things into smaller mirrorless camera that's the thing i think they will release a mirrorless 
dedicated video camera. Again, um, you need examples, FX3, Sony, yeah, so that's, the, you know, that's kind of thing can happen. Or if you look at the Canon lineup of a proper video cameras with a Canon mount, that's, that's what we can see as well. So proper box with a Z mount, that's option one probably cheaper than dedicated uh, red box with the cine mounts, you know, so I think that's where we will stand. But then we will start to get the, something like FX3 and things like this um, in the mix as well. And uh, if you think that obviously this whole raw thing that Red sued Nikon for, that now suddenly becomes a non-issue. Um, if Nikon had some limitation on n raw functionality, if they ever had, then we will start to see those things to improve as well. So um, who knows? Maybe they will start to use uh, the red, uh, you know, dedicated raw for their video cameras instead of n raw. You know, so all all sorts of things uh, that they can do. And obviously, don't forget that yeah, red cameras on Netflix and cinema approved. Uh, therefore. You know, I, I don't think there's any Nikon camera that is Netflix approved. I mean, we will use Netflix as a benchmark for all streaming services. That's as simple as that. So, you know, so that would be quite interesting to see. Uh, Samantha, hello, Samantha. Good to see you. She says, sometimes it's better to have specialist cameras than, than an all-rounder. As a photographer, I don't want to pay for an expensive camera just because of extra video capabilities that I don't want need. I agree, Samantha. Um, the only thing about this is that, as, as uh, you know, because the video nowadays is built in into our cameras, um, so in terms of this, um, I think... If we get a new camera with the functionality that we already have now, that's fine. Yes, if we start to get it, you know, I think a lot of that red functionality, if it ever goes into, trickles down to uh, lower cameras, we may see some in the photographer's cameras, but I think the whole point is that Nikon will release their own Z-mount mirrorless video system. So uh, dedicated video camera. Let's call it uh, Z, uh, I don't know, what's it called, Z3, yeah, or something like this, you know, uh, who knows. So that's, that, that's my thing. So I don't think, Samantha, you'll pay anything extra. You will still get your 4K or 8K functionality with the newest release. So, uh, and that's just uh, kind of comes all in one. You can't really have a now cameras without video functionality. And if they, and if the companies release the cameras, digital cameras without video functionality, they just turn it off really. So that's what it is. So because the technology is there. So it's not like you can really, you know, pick and choose. Would be cool, though. Would be cool. I agree. All right. So let's see. Uh, Michael um, Michael says, Red isn't publicly traded company, so I'm not sure on the financial. I agree. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult to see. It's very difficult to see. Um, but yeah, as I say, uh, the question is, why would Red want to sell them to Nikon? So, you know, obviously, maybe a, a big payout. Who knows? But uh, obviously, people who are running them, they'll get, um, you know, I mean, they, they will still run them as a separate company, which is good as well. Uh, but yeah, financials uh, would be interesting if it ever comes out to see the financials, you know, what 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 state are they in. Uh, Jason says, I think we need Z6 Mark III right now. Uh, well, yeah, um, I have the same question. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I really, I really think that it's been, is like, Last autumn was a good time to do that, but um, it is what it is. Um, we just get riled up on the rumors that are there. Um, and we are all guilty. You as a viewer who clicks on this, uh, we are the content creators who discuss this and the rumors websites that publish it. Everyone takes part of it, but you you see how it's a vicious circle that everyone feeds each other. That's the thing. So when one complains about another one, you should really kind of look at everyone in this circle, yourselves as well, you know, so that's the thing. Uh, as I say, Lanzarote rumor again, put the, the you know, the hype on, on the new camera, which hasn't been announced yet. Is it coming? Is it not? I hope it is, but, uh, you know, realistically speaking, that's what happens, yeah? So we have now this void of no rumors on Z6 Mark III and be like, yo, Nikon is late behind the party. Well, not really. I mean, they have their own timeline. They know what, they know what's happening. We can just speculate. But realistically speaking, none of us knows anything. And if they say they do, they're lying. That's as simple as that. So let's have a look. Z Red, Ben, say, yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Maybe they will call it ZR. 
Mm, that would be interesting. Um, let's see. Let's see what else. Um, Z9H or ZH may already be using Red Tech. Good question. I like. I don't know in terms of acquisition how quickly they get this. And actually, this is the question I want to ask you. Uh, how long do you think we'll start to see um, red features implemented uh, into um, into the Nikon cameras? So I'm gonna make a poll of this. How long do you think? Red, I'll put red features if that's okay. Red features will, or red tech, let's just do red tech. We'll make it in, we'll make it into Nikon cameras. I'll put one year, six months, one year, two years. I want to I wanna hear your opinions on this. So hopefully this thing is running now. Champagne Summer says, I'm not angry, but I want to be a photographer. Um, the good news is, Champagne Summer, you will still be a photographer. That's the thing. Your camera that you have right now still takes good pictures, isn't it? Um, you know, as you know, some people kind of got angry at me and say, is, Ni is, Ni is uh, Nikon Z9 still a good camera? Obviously, it was a joke when I asked Becky this, but uh, that's the problem with the nature of the internet. Yeah, so suddenly our cameras are not good enough. And, uh, you know, I'm going to California and I'm going to shoot film probably 90% of the time, you know, because my digital camera is not good enough, isn't it? <laughs> so, like, that's kind of, we, we need to see everything with a little bit of, you know, kind of more objective prism in a way. And I know it's very easy to get lost in the excitement or anger of certain things. But realistically speaking, I think photography features will develop. I mean, what kind of, what, what photography, like, what the most needed photography feature right now? Like, what do we need as photographers? Uh, Global shots, I think uh, that will benefit uh, probably 5% of photographers' sports and wildlife. Everyone else is good. I could shoot with, without vibration reduction, you know. Uh, a lot of people say 24 megapixels is good enough. What photography feature do we need right now that we don't already have in our cameras? You know, that's a good question. I want to hear from you. I want to know that. All right, so Jetford says, willing to bet that 35.1.2 is coming pretty soon. Um, we have one lens left on the roadmap that hasn't been announced yet, uh, and it's on the roadmap. So wild guess, if it's been mentioned, you know, on a roadmap, then who knows? Maybe you'll see it by the end of financial year, which ends this month. That's, that's, that's my wild guess, you know, so, or early, early. So, you know, but uh, obviously they they haven't showed the prototype yet, but uh, we kind of assume that H512 is coming. So um, who knows? Maybe it's going to be end of the financial year. Maybe it's going to be April, May. Fingers crossed. Who knows? Maybe Z63 will come as a part of that announcement. Uh, Dan Joe is saying, I shoot a five. What am I doing here? What is that mount? Welcome to the club. <laughs> I, I just uh, shot a few rolls yesterday with my Nikon F100. Fantastic camera. Oof. Every time I come back to it, it's such a great camera. Don't, I think Hot's Fox is fantastic, you know, on F100. Um, so that's what it is. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Red Z Revolution. Uh, Day Walks is, I think, uh, um, the Canon guys whose uh, patience is really being tested at the moment with a mythical R1 that's been coming for as long as I can remember. Here we go. I, don't, I didn't even know this, but that's the thing. We're in all our own micro circle here where we care about Nikon. We think, oh, Nikon has done this, has done this. Every brand, every followers, if you're Canon user, you probably have this. If, you, if you're into this room as a new scene, you know. If you're a Fuji guy as well, you probably do this. If you're Sony, oh, that's, yeah. It's a scary place, you know, but uh, uh, it's one of those things that you probably will be part of. So all brands are going through this kind of thing of uh, excitement and anger, you know, this whole circle of life. So Len Oshman says, more dynamic range would be nice. Exactly. We talked to the guys this morning, um, to my colleagues downstairs, and said, well, normal uh, di digital cameras nowadays, we got up, up to 14 stops roughly, maybe 15 tops, yeah? Uh, that's as far as we get on our sensors. Uh, and it's basically a range between 12 to about, four, to about 15 marks, yeah? So uh, 
again, um, for, um, 8K full frame global shutter sensor with 17 stops of dynamic range. That's where it's at, yeah, with RED. So that's what we can potentially look forward to. Obviously, that's a very expensive camera right now, and probably that sensor by itself is cost a lot and probably very difficult to manufacture in uh, high volume, you know. So, uh, but that's that's kind of one thing to look into. Ari, I think, has 19 stops on their sensors, you know, and uh, I think Nikon should just buy Ari as well at the same time as RED, and then <laughs> suddenly we have a a new king in the cinematographer's market. So um, let's have a look. I'm just going to have a coffee. Thank you, Vince. He says, have a coffee or buy Ari. I I'd buy Ari, personally. You know, the whole company, not just the camera. But obviously their cameras are, what's it, Alexa Mini or something like this? Um, beautiful camera, again. Let's talk about volumes. Those cameras are manufactured in massive volumes, you know. Ari is probably manufactured in, well, I don't know, maybe triple digits. I don't think quadruple. Uh, the same with reds. You know, those are not exactly a mass market cameras. Um, John Q says, was the Nikon roadmap good, bad, or just interesting? I think uh, Nikon roadmap covered all the places that need to be covered. And I think uh, uh, the... The range now is pretty good. Obviously, we can look into certain things that they haven't released, like uh, this 200 micro or 200 prime for sports, obviously 300, 500, tilt shift lenses, all sorts of things. Yeah, uh, small uh, stabby wide angle lenses or small DX prime lenses, uh, all that is still uh, needs to be done. But if we talk about just kind of if you look at the whole range of Nikon Z roadmap, I think it's pretty, pretty good. I think it's, you can't really say it's a new system. It was always puzzling me, especially last year when DP Review was always saying that Nikon lineup is not big enough. And uh, that statement would be good about two, three years ago, but not in 2023 or 2024. Um, yeah. Uh, so... Um Jack, uh, Jaquila says some red users are feeling bad because they think Nikon is bad. Uh, touche, you know, I mean, my opinion or red, or red user opinion doesn't matter in this case, I'm afraid. So, um, but yeah, it is what it is. But uh, what's good about Nikon being Nikon, they say that we let red run as red. Um, if you think about it, when DJI bought Hasselblad, DJI, Chinese company, make drones, bought Hasselblad. Oh, my God. Um, they said we're going to let Hasselblad run themselves. Um, and I think they're doing a reasonably good job. That's the thing. I think uh, Hasselblad still stays Hasselblad. I don't think there's much change in their DNA. And I'm glad they got rid of rebatch Sony camera, cameras like points and shoots and stuff like this. They now focus on their core products, which is, which is really good. So hopefully Nikon does the same thing. Um, that's... That's my opinion, you know, so, um, and uh, obviously it's, f it's fair to say that Nikon now owns the tech so they can apply that tech um, to Nikon cameras, but also they can apply that tech to red cameras. That's another thing. So, you know, it's not, it's not, a, it's, it's not a one way game here, in my opinion. Uh, so Craig C says roadmap was necessary for Z line migration. Agree, no longer needed. Exactly, that's what Nikon reps said as well. Um, so yeah, that's uh, they agree to this. So we we we're not going to see um, future heads up on what what needs to come out. Um, let's have a look. So I'm just thinking about GFX. Um, it's not really comparable with GFX, but G, uh, GFX Fuji system still have a lot of lenses missing, but. Uh, I don't think it's fair comparison now because GFX is still a not mass, let's say, in terms of maybe um, just the uni how many units they sell. Yeah, I don't think it's comparable with Nikon. So it's, it's more niche, I would say. Um, so PLE Hirin says, sorry if I butcher your question, how do you think that Nikon uh, will not add as many video features as before for its steel cameras since Nikon would not want the Nikon products to compete with red products? Uh, there's gonna, like, 
I think there's going to be different price points. We, I, as I said, we, I think we, Red is going to continue doing what the Red is doing. Nikon is going to rele release a dedicated video system. That's in, in, that's what I think is going to happen because Red cameras are expensive. So if Nikon releases something cheaper that competes with Canon and Sony offerings, I think that's going to be good. And then we'll see uh, certain features that will trigger a tree, a kind of kind of spread. Uh, among all the cameras. So I don't know if the user interface, let's say, or menu system is going to be on all cameras, including red. I don't know. But uh, I, I, I think if you're a sales photographer, you shouldn't worry. That's the thing. Um, and there will be definitely clear separations in terms of price market entry and just, you know, uh, into the system. That's the thing. That's what I think is going to happen. Now, the question is, if Nikon is going to have a dedicated video camera with a Z mount, yeah, so we can use all our Z lenses, will ever Nikon release a senior lenses? What do you think? You know, so that's another question I want to ask you. So um, just to end the poll uh, that we had for the last 10 minutes. So we had, and I've just closed it. So yeah, so we've got, um, how long do you think RedSec will make it to Nikon cameras? Uh, most of you voted uh, t for two years, so it will take two years for Nikon to implement that tech. Uh, th second place is one year 30, with 35% votes and six months with 19% votes. Thank you very much uh, for all of you who voted. I appreciate that. If you haven't given the stream a like, I would definitely, definitely appreciate that. That helps. Uh, is Grace going to sell red hardware now? Uh, not now, no. <laughs> we will see whether, you know, uh, I, pff, too early. Too early to say. You know, uh, I think if you ask a Nikon rep now what's going to happen, no one will know anything. That's the thing. Um, let's say uh, Nikon owns uh, Microbis motion control. We're not selling their robotic arms, if you see what I mean. So, um, so highly likely not. But personally, I would love to hold the red camera in my hand just to see what, what it's like and what am I missing. But we're not really video guys, so, you know. Uh, we do those little YouTube videos uh, on whatever equipment we have and, you know, hope you enjoy them. So um, let's have a look. Let's see more questions in the chat, see if I missed anything. Uh, JetFlot says global shot costs will drop as they eventually do. They will. And the question is how many years? Um, if you've seen Sony... A9 Mark III, yeah, so global shots release. It's their first one. Um, dynamic range is not that good. Yeah, so Red has 17 stops, whatever that 9 Mark III dynamic range has, but it's apparently not that good. So um, it's going to take some time. Uh, it's going to take s several iterations. As we all know, you release something very, you know, flagship and expensive, and then you try to figure out how to make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and bring that technology down to the masses. So uh, that's a matter of time. Cameras, video cameras, computer hardware, you, know, you name it. Anything technology-wise is the same. Um, think how much the first iPhone, the cost of it, and, you know, and what we have now in our hands, you know. So that's, that's what it is. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, Phil Cornelio says it's important that Nikon not interfere with red, but instead infuse with cash and any Nikon IP that can help while uh, taking what makes sense and adding to the cameras. Exactly, exactly. And that's that was my analogy with the uh, DJI and Hasselblad relationships, you know. Not exactly the same, but uh, it seems like DJI is not really intervening with uh, the way how Hasselblad operates. Uh, and if you look at Mark Roberts Motion Control, which is owned by Nikon, Mark Roberts Motion Control run by themselves. So, you know, so obviously they're owned by Nikon. Uh, if you look at Nikon Corp, Nikon bought a lot of additive manufacturer, uh, manufacturers recently. So it's effectively 3D printing, but with metals and stuff like this. So uh, again, they acquire those companies it seems like they let them run, um, you know, um, in the, in the way they, they run before, but but while introducing the you know their knowledge and learning from those companies as well. So I think it's a, obviously a fine balance, and hopefully they'll continue to do so. Uh, the time will tell, of course. Uh, uh, the walk says only thing uh, only thing I still really want is the plan, but the money needs to go to new Max. Okay, yeah, that's uh, I um, thank you, Dave. Uh, let's have a look. 
Does Red use Nikon lenses, Michael Brown? It doesn't, no. It uses Cine lenses, but you can also adapt all sorts of lenses on it. I, I don't know if there's a Z adapt, um, mount adapter for Red cameras exist, but it will now, that's for sure. Um, uh, Vahography says this benefits Red big time. Now Red will have an unlimited R&D budget for better cameras, hopefully. Um, Paul is asking any power zoom mount lenses um, in development for that mount. Uh, power zoom like 12, 20, uh, 28 lens that there is for DX mount. Uh, I hope they do. Again, I personally think it's uh, more of a niche thing from photographer's point of view, but for videographers, I think it's quite useful. So who knows? Obviously, it was one-off uh, for that mount right now, but the only lens that we know is coming eventually is 35 1.2. Um, Prasanna, uh, so uh, Prasanna, we um, we asked the question in the poll. So um, so if you scroll up the chat, you'll see what people voted for. Uh, 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 Chase says, I think uh, Nikon's expertise in lens manufacturing, and let's be honest, Nikon lenses are superb. Um, maybe you'll get medium format camera. Um, again, it's a wild, it's a long shot. I don't think it's going to happen, but who knows? Um, okay, let's see. I'm buffering. Still buffering. I'm having my coffee while I'm still buffering. Still buffering. Exactly. Okay, am I not buffering now? I think I'm not buffering now. I was having my coffee actually, yeah. So it's 3 p.m. We should start our live stream from two from now on uh, because apparently there's probably some TV show on the telly or something on the internet at three o'clock. So they just, everyone just presses that play button and uh, streams it and we don't have internet here anymore. So whatever is happening, the mystery continues. Um, but yeah, um, there's a lot of thoughts. I still, like, I haven't seen any of you saying what, actually the stills photography feature that we need right now that we don't have already on our cameras. I want to see that. Not a little feature. What's the big, big feature that we need right now? I think our cameras are pretty good now. It's always nice to have a shiny new toy, but uh, I, think, uh, I think the cameras are pretty good. No, um, if you know the missing feature, definitely, definitely uh, let me know. Um, people saying I'm back. Thank you very much. I am back. I've uh, I've been away for five minutes. Um, just had my sandwich uh, and all that, but uh, gonna have my coffee as well. So um, thanks for that. Um, Steel's photography feature. I want to know in the chat. Definitely, let me know in the comments what Steel's photography feature we are missing because video photographers' features are now coming. I'm I'm pretty sure they're coming. So, um, you know, if I, I have never tried red camera, has any of you tried red camera? Um, so I want to know, what, what, you know, obviously they have expertise in video work. So a lot of this stuff is going to come into Nikon system. And I think Nikon video features are actually pretty good. I mean, like when Z9 came out, they, this, they had this massive update as well with the video functionality all the zebras, all the false color stuff, you know, so that's all really good. Obviously, Enro we already had, but uh, uh, there's more things to come. Um, and I think that's what benefits Nikon from this. Obviously, it does benefit Red as we, as we agreed. So in terms of this, I think Nikon just suddenly filled that gap in the video market that 
they well they basically acquired this piece of market that they they, they never had so whatever they release from now on in, in that space it's gonna have weight um so i think i don't know when the when the nikon video camera jk video camera comes out you know so but uh, when it comes out if it comes out in a year or so it's probably will have a lot of uh a red um uh i um not id um but uh, yeah it will have definitely some uh red functionality in it you know so that's that's my thinking uh craig c says for steals uh only thing on my wish list especially after the massive z8 update is in camera focus stacking yeah that's um you know again implement a similar way that hdr is okay i the, the thing about this i think it's a software thing um again i i think that software will be improving all the time on those things and uh, we discussed this in the podcast um on this week's podcast where we said that as long as we have hardware that is future proof the software can handle a lot of those things so that's the thing so um and that's what we are suddenly seeing now where software improves all the time uh third frames fps raw please okay roger so again how is it important for regular photographers uh this is feature that people benefit maybe five percent of photographers and everyone else will use it once and forget about it so that that's that's kind of my point is i don't say we don't need this you know uh but my point being is at what point we decide that we need this everything now for your personal photography that's the thing there's a there's a reason why we have those dedicated sports you know expensive cameras with all those high functionality for general photography i don't think you might need that you know so that's the thing but i don't like that's my thinking about it better focusing len how bad is your focusing right now on z8 and z9 and zf i think if we get to that that point and that's why we are clamoring for z6 mark 3 again a lot of you shooting z6 II and z7 mark II. so in terms of this a lot of you are saying that we are you know the focusing is good with the new generation of cameras focusing is going to be better do we need better focusing than this again splitting hair really so and this is still going to improve but it's already really 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 fast so okay well i have a special guest for you today we are gonna have the one and only gray levitt in the house let's see let's see the framing gray first i want to see where we're at so the lights are going to fall down the microphones let's see if i can here for a moment. Okay. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm good, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Hope you didn't mind me dropping in to see you. No, it's always good to see you. Yeah. yeah. Afternoon, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to adjust. I'm just going to zoom out a little. Bit. Okay. Okay. Now, the reason I wanted to drop in, really, and uh, say hello to everybody was... Um, um, last Thursday night uh, at a rather spectacular uh, events um, space in London called the Underglobe, which stands beneath Shakespeare's Globe Theatre on the banks of the Thames, was the Amateur Photographer Awards for 2024, um, and um, where uh, readers are uh, encouraged to vote for uh, their favourite products, um, favourite accessories. And um, uh, so Constantine, uh, Becky, uh, Gillian, uh, Greenwood and myself um, attended. And uh, on our table, uh, we had some illustrious people, in, including Jill Fermanowski, the, uh, the, the famous music uh, mm -hmm. photographer who got a Lifetime Achievement Award, someone I first met in the late 70s. Uh, so it was great to see her. And uh, why I particularly wanted to come on was because uh, we were voted, um, uh, everyone is allowed to vote for good service awards, um, and uh, which are uh, very valid um, accolades. Uh, but the dealer that wins the most votes gets the special Platinum Good Service Award. And uh, I'm very proud to say that, uh, and delighted to say, that um, we uh, have won it for the eighth year in a row. Here it is. And if you voted for us, I just wanted to say thank you very much indeed. 
um, it was uh, it was a great uh, a great evening and uh, enjoyable for us all to be there and meet our other uh, colleagues in the field. And Nikon did particularly well, didn't they? Yes, yes. So the uh, Z8 won the product of the year. Um, the Z8 won the Reader's Choice, and then the H5 won the uh, what's called the the short portrait focal distance or something short telephoto focal distance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, quite quite a few. And as you were saying, the colleagues, I thought. It's it's a small industry. It is, but, yeah. But there were quite a few people in there. There was, uh, there were quite a few people, and, and really the, um, the the amateur photographer, which has been going for a hundred and forty years, um, is is an ex it's an extraordinary thing that they they kept going even during two world wars, and their um, uh, present and long serving um, editor Nigel Atherton is going to be. Uh, one of our live stream guests in the not too distant future, which uh, we're both looking forward to uh, very much to see him. And um, in honor of us uh, sort of winning this uh, award, we uh, wanted to uh, do a special uh, for a, a few days, which um, uh, we first did um, uh, when we did the hundredth, um, mm. uh, not the hundredth, when we, <laughs> when we did the, um, uh, li what was it? The, um, the history. Yes, we the, did the history, yeah. History We're not 100 Nikon. years old yet. Not, so no, uh, that's right. So uh, A few more days. That's right. So it's um, our magazine here, uh, Nikon Owner, and uh, a beautiful glossy uh, magazine uh, available to subscribers all over the world in various times. So we're doing... We're doing another special um, on it, which is £10 off the uh, the current price. I think you can find details on... If you go into the description, it's there. So yeah. it's nikononshop.com, and then when you place an order, use content for ten pounds off. That's right, ten pounds yeah. off, and and, uh, and uh, very worthwhile. We would love to have you join us or rejoin us. And uh, if you've got any work, we'd really like to uh, see it because with a magazine like this, it's content, 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 and we do do this to uh, as high a level as we possibly can um, on um, glossy, beautiful little stock paper, so it really does uh, hold the images um, uh, really well, doesn't it? Well, I'm taking some with me to United States, uh, and I think it's about 300 grams for one issue. Yeah. <laughs> So I can only get about 20 kilos in my luggage. So how many magazines is that? I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're, it's a quite heavy paper stock, which is, yeah, the images reproduce really nice on that. So what are you going to be doing? Is it a holiday? Going to do a road trip. It's yeah. a holiday. I'm going to meet some of our viewers in person. Oh, good. I'm going to hand deliver some magazines in hand. Uh, but the plan is me and my wife in a car driving through California mm. to places like Las Vegas. Obviously, right. uh, probably after this, I'm not going to have either car or wife <laughs> or money, you know, but uh, then we're doing Monument Valley, Grand Canyon, Sequoia, Yosemite, San Francisco, mm -hmm. back to LA, all in a space for about two weeks. Good grief. And so you'll be going up the Pacific Coast Highway? I will do. Yeah. It's closed in some areas. Is it? So we may need to monitor it. Yes, I, okay. think, they're, I think they're working. We can see the Bigsby Bridge, the big bridge, but mm. I think further out we would have to come back to the main highway, right. then go back down to Morro Bay and then go up as yeah. well. So that's going to be uh, and that's another three, four hours, but it's oh, fine. I can absolutely. drive. I can, I can probably, after this trip, I will be able to work as a truck driver. <laughs> You know, gonna have this proper truck driver's hat. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, gonna have a honk. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to that. <laughs> okay. Good. If you have suggestions for me for anything good to see in California, definitely get in touch with me, send me some messages. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we're not going to have any live stream next week. We may have a podcast. We may not really will depend on our schedule. Uh, but, 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 but we'll have some videos out in between. And it's always a pleasure to see you all. Have a great weekend, everyone. We will see you soon. Yes, have a wonderful time. Good to see you, however briefly this time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.